We've all created images like these. Trust me, I've made thousands. And they've all one thing in common. They are boring AF. But don't worry, after watching my 10 step method you will have become a better artist. If not, feel free to roast me in the comments after watching the video. Let's go. Challenge yourself. Join a contest. Platforms like Civit AI and Wirestock hosts contests regularly. Also, you can win prize money. Civit AI, for example, recently hosted the legendary landscape contest, which has now concluded. The prize money is ranging from 50 to 150 US dollar per category. That's real money for your art. But it's more than that. They challenge you to adhere to specific rules and restrictions. This can drastically broaden your artistic approach and sharpen your skills. You get to experiment with new styles and techniques and the worst outcome, you end up a better artist. The best outcome, you also have more money in your pocket. Quick side note here, you don't want to miss out on step six because it's crucial for your journey. Step two, embrace Kaizen by daily learning. Kaizen comes from the Japanese philosophy. It means change for the better. Commit to learning something new each day. I recommend dedicating at least one hour like I do from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. But even 10 or 30 minutes can make a huge difference. Make it a consistent part of your daily routine, then it will become a habit. Use this time to explore a new workflow or download a new cool Laura. Get creative and mix things up, like merging Art Deco with Minecraft or reimagining classic memes with a new twist such as Obi-Wan using the force to levitate a pizza. Another amazing idea is watch one of my other videos of course. Speaking of which, step 5 is going to be an amazing tool for stable diffusion users. Step 3. Repeat after me. I do not copy prompts just to recreate someone else's images. Use it as a learning tool instead. Understand the prompts. What worked? What didn't? Then tweak aspects of the image to align with your own taste. Try to change the style, render it with a different checkpoint or you could also experiment with a new Laura. Apply this to AI art and let it guide your innovation. Step number 4. Use iconic movie scenes. Take your favorite movie and watch it with a critical eye. Focus on what makes certain scenes unforgettable. Let's consider the iconic Spartan kick in 300 or the tense T-Rex scene in Jurassic Park where Dr. Grant tricks the T-Rex. In Jurassic Park the T-Rex immense power is shown by the overturned car and the broken fence. The T-Rex emerges from the shadow into the light dramatized by the rain. Notice Dr. Grant's positioning, his raised leg, his motion with the flare. While analyzing, start prompting. By dissecting these elements, you can apply similar techniques to create compelling narratives in your artwork. Remember, the magic is in the details. Now I'm going to show you how to create this image from this. That's easy. Just open up Microsoft Paint and draw something in the worst way possible like this. Then head over to your automatic 11.11 or Conf UI. You have to have ControlNet installed for this. If you don't know what this means, then watch this video first, but don't forget to come back. You need to have a model that's called Scribble. For SD 1.5, go to this URL, scroll down, and here you download the Scribble PTH and YAML file. Actually, in the newer versions, you don't need the YAML file because it's created automatically, I think. But I would download them anyway. In your stable diffusion folder, you need to put them under models and here under control net. I have quite a few, as you can see. For SDXL, however, you need to go to Civit AI and download it from here. There isn't really a scribble model, just an anime scribble, but it works good in most cases. After downloading, throw your image in here and now we click on scribble. So, let's say control net is more important. Um, actually, it says you need to switch it to invert, um, but you can leave it as is and try it out if you want. It can work too, actually. For prompt, let's say freeze on the left. 
river in the middle house on the right photo realistic so schedule type i set to carous sampling steps to let's say 30 and we make it 768 by 768 okay now let's make four images go These are our results. So some of them are really good. I like it. Oh, that's not really a house here. This is very good for prototyping and give you a rough idea where you want to come out in the end. Step number six. Don't try to nail your prompt on the first try. I often know what I want, but I don't know how to prompt it. For this image, all I knew is I wanted an epic magical sword that is secured in place by some kind of magic or magical lock. So I began with a basic image of a sword in a display case. It was a solid start, but not quite what I had envisioned. I wanted the sword itself to be magic or enchanted. So I added something like magical flames engulfing the sword. This looked like an improvement, but apart from its flaming hilt, it felt like that the sword could be easily stolen. To enhance security, I used a color Laura that can encase objects in a glass case. Initially, I chose this Laura for its vibrant colors, but it turned out to be a perfect choice that added the secure setting I needed. Bob Ross would say, happy little excellence. With some more prompt engineering and additional Lauras, I eventually achieved the desired result. The sword now not only looked magical, but also securely locked away. Also for prompting, don't forget about my free guides on Patreon. If you have to do a portrait shot, try using a facial expression at least. There are Lauras for this as well. It will make your image look more natural and consistent. Just ask yourself, what is the character in the image feeling and why? Or why is he standing this way? If your character is standing in the rain, maybe his face and clothes should be wet. For cowboy shots, use gestures and poses. This can easily be achieved by using Lauras or ControlNet open pose. Step number eight. Before diving in your AI art creation, start by jotting down everything you envision for your scene. If you don't know where you are going, any road can take you there. This could include characters, how many are there, what are their motivations, equipment, what are they wearing, swords, backpacks, a pip boy, shot size, is it a full portrait or an upper body shot maybe, is it a daytime scene or nighttime, where does it take place, your general composition, what elements make up the foreground and what is important in the back. What also can help here is creating a mind map. The good old chat GPT can help, of course. Step number nine, clear your head. Feeling stuck? When ideas aren't flowing, taking a short break and changing your environment can do wonders. For example, I love to hop on my bike and ride through the nearby forest. This does not only refresh my mind, but also clears the mental clutter that can block creativity. If art is your true passion, make it a habit to carry a notebook with you. You can of course use an app for this, but when I'm outside, I sometimes leave my mobile at home. I find my best ideas when I'm not sitting in front of a computer screen. It's more than taking a break. While physically active, new experiences, sights and sound will stimulate your brain. So open up your senses and let the art flow. Step number 10. Here's one of my first AI art creations from 12 months ago. The werewolf itself was pretty cringe-worthy. Apart from the composition with the moon in the background, there's nothing good about this image. This is the image quality I would render a werewolf now. So my advice here is never stop learning. Bonus tip, a lot of artists will tell you that you shouldn't use more than three or four Loras. This is total bull I created amazing images using eight or more Loras. Never stop learning. Always strive to improve your skills and push the boundaries of what AI can create. To help you with that, I suggest you should watch this video next.